Jakarta, Indonesian pronunciation, Dakarta, officially the special capital region of Jakarta Indonesian, Daerah Khusus Ibu Kota Jakarta, is the capital and largest city of Indonesia. It is located on the northwest coast of the world's most populous island, Java, it is the center of economics, culture and politics of Indonesia. It hosted a population of 10,075,310 as of 2014. The Greater Jakarta Metropolitan Area has an area of 6,392 square kilometers, which is known as Jabodetabek an acronym of Jakarta, Bogor, Depok, Tangerang and Bekasi. It is the world's second largest urban agglomeration after Tokyo with a population of 30,214,303 as of 2010. Jakarta is predicted to reach 35.6 million people by 2030 to become the world's biggest megacity. Jakarta's business opportunities, as well as its potential to offer a higher standard of living, attract migrants from across the Indonesian archipelago, combining many communities and cultures. Established in the 4th century as Sunda Kelapa, the city became an important trading port for the Sunda Kingdom. It was the de facto capital of the Dutch East Indies, when it was known as Batavia. Jakarta is officially a province with special capital region status, but is commonly referred to as a city. The Jakarta provincial government consists of five administrative cities and one administrative regency. Jakarta is nicknamed the Big Durian, the thorny strongly odored fruit native to the region, as the city is seen as the Indonesian equivalent of New York Big Apple. Jakarta is an alpha world city and is the seat of the ASEAN Secretariat, making it an important city for international diplomacy. Important financial institutions such as Bank of Indonesia, Indonesia Stock Exchange, and corporate headquarters of numerous Indonesian companies and multinational corporations are located in the city. As of 2017, the city is home for six Forbes Global 2000, two Fortune 500 and four unicorn companies. In 2014, the city's GDP was estimated at $321.3 billion and economic growth was ranked 34th among the world's 200 largest cities. Jakarta has grown more rapidly than Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, and Beijing. Jakarta's major challenges include rapid urban growth, ecological breakdown, gridlock traffic and congestion, poverty and inequality, and flooding. Jakarta is sinking up to 17 centimeters (6.7 inches) per year, which coupled with the rising of sea level has made the city more prone to flooding. Topic: History. Topic: Names and etymology. Jakarta has been home to multiple settlements. Sunda Kelapa (397-1527). Jayakarta 1527 to 1619 Batavia 1619 to 1942 Jakarta 1942 to 1945 Jakarta 1945 present its current name Jakarta derives from the word Jayakarta Devanagari Jayakarta which is ultimately derived from Sanskrit language Jaya Jaya victorious and Kurta Krta accomplished acquired thus Jayakarta translates as victorious deed, complete act, or complete victory, which literally, Jakarta means the victorious city. It was named after troops of Fatehila successfully defeated and drove away Portuguese invaders from the city in 1527. Before it was named Jayakarta, the city was known as Sunda Kelapa. In the colonial era, the city was also known as Koningen van het Oosten, Queen of the Orient, initially in the 17th century for the urban beauty of downtown Batavia's canals, mansions and ordered city layout. After expanding to the south in the 19th century, this nickname came to be more associated with the suburbs e.g. Menteng and the area around Merdeka Square, with their wide lanes, green spaces and villas. Pre-colonial era. The north coast area of western Java including Jakarta, was the location of prehistoric bunny culture that flourished from 400 BC to 100 AD. The area in and around modern Jakarta was part of the 4th century Sundanese kingdom of Tarumanagara, one of the oldest Hindu kingdoms in Indonesia. The area of north Jakarta around Tugu became a populated settlement at least in the early 5th century. 
The Tugu inscription probably written around 417 AD discovered in Batutumba hamlet, Tugu village, Koja, North Jakarta, mentions that King Purnarwarman of Tarumanagara undertook hydraulic projects, the irrigation and water drainage project of the Chandrabhaga River and the Gomati River near his capital. Following the decline of Tarumanagara, its territories, including the Jakarta area, became part of the Hindu kingdom of Sunda. From the 7th to the early 13th century, the port of Sunda was under the Srivijaya Maritime Empire. According to the Chinese source, Chu Fan Kai, written circa 1225, Cho Ju Kua reported in the early 13th century Srivijaya still ruled Sumatra, the Malay Peninsula and western Java Sunda. The source reports the port of Sunda as strategic and thriving, mentioning pepper from Sunda as among the best in quality. The people worked in agriculture and their houses were built on wooden piles. The harbour area became known as Sunda Kelapa Sundanese, and by the 14th century, it was a major trading port for the Sunda Kingdom. The first European fleet, four Portuguese ships from Malacca, arrived in 1513, while looking for a route for spices. The Sunda Kingdom made an alliance treaty with the Portuguese by allowing them to build a port in 1522 to defend against the rising power of Damak Sultanate from central Java. In 1527, Fatehila, a Javanese general from Damak attacked and conquered Sunda Kelapa, driving out the Portuguese. Sunda Kelapa was renamed Jayakarta, and became a fiefdom of the Bantan Sultanate, which became a major Southeast Asia trading center. Through the relationship with Prince Jayawikarta of Banten Sultanate, Dutch ships arrived in 1596. In 1602, the English East India Company's first voyage, commanded by Sir James Lancaster, arrived in Aceh and sailed on to Banten where they were allowed to build a trading post. This site became the centre of English trade in Indonesia until 1682. Jayawikarta is thought to have made trading connections with the English merchants, rivals of the Dutch, by allowing them to build houses directly across from the Dutch buildings in 1615. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Colonial Era. When relations between Prince Jayawikarta and the Dutch deteriorated, his soldiers attacked the Dutch fortress. His army and the English, however, were defeated by the Dutch, in part owing to the timely arrival of Jan Pietersen Cohen. The Dutch burned the English fort, and forced them to retreat on their ships. The victory consolidated Dutch power and in 1619 they renamed the city Batavia. Commercial opportunities in the city attracted native and especially Chinese and Arab immigrants. This sudden population increase created burdens on the city. Tensions grew as the colonial government tried to restrict Chinese migration through deportations. Following a revolt, 5,000 Chinese were massacred by the Dutch and natives on 9 October 1740 and the following year, Chinese inhabitants were moved to Glodok outside the city walls. At the beginning of the 19th century, around 400 Arabs and Moors lived in Batavia, a number which changed little during the following decades. Among the commodities traded, fabrics, especially imported cotton, batik and clothing worn by Arab communities. The city began to expand further south as epidemics in 1835 and 1870 forced residents to move away from the port. The Koningsplein, now Merdeka Square was completed in 1818, the housing park of Menteng was started in 1913 and Kabayaran Baru was the last Dutch-built residential area. By 1930, Batavia had more than 500,000 inhabitants, including 37,067 Europeans. After World War II, the city of Batavia was renamed Jakarta, a short form of Jayakarta by nationalists. After achieving independence in 1949, on the 5th of March 1942, the Japanese wrested Batavia from Dutch control, and the city was named Jakarta, Jakarta Special City, Jakaruda Te Baie Shi, Jakaruda Tokabetsu Shi, in accordance with the special status that was assigned to the city. After the war, the Dutch name Batavia was internationally recognized until full Indonesian independence was achieved on 27 December 1949 and Jakarta was officially proclaimed the national capital of Indonesia. <inaudible> <inaudible> independence era Following World War II, Indonesian Republicans withdrew from Allied-occupied Jakarta during their fight for independence and established their capital in Yogyakarta. Indonesian nationalists declared independence on 17 August 1945 and the government of Jakarta City was changed into the Jakarta National Administration in the following month. 
In 1950, once independence was secured, Jakarta again became the national capital. Sukarno, envisaging Jakarta as a great international city, instigated large government-funded projects with openly nationalistic and modernist architecture. Projects included a clover-leaf highway, a major boulevard Jalan M. H. Thamarin Sudirman, monuments such as the National Monument, Hotel Indonesia, a shopping center, and a new parliament building. In October 1965, Jakarta was the site of an abortive coup attempt in which six top generals were killed, precipitating a violent anti-communist purge in which half a million people were killed, including many ethnic Chinese, marking the beginning of Suharto's new order. A monument stands where the general's bodies were dumped. This first government was led by a mayor until the end of 1960, when the office was changed to that of a governor. The last mayor of Jakarta was Sodara, until he was replaced by Somarno Sosrotmajo as governor. Based on Act No. 5 of 1974 relating to the fundamentals of regional government, Jakarta was confirmed as the capital of Indonesia and one of Indonesia's then 26 provinces. In 1966, Jakarta was declared a special capital region, Daira Kusis Abukota, with status equivalent to that of a province. Lieutenant General Ali Sadikin served as governor from the mid-1960s commencement of the New Order. Until 1977, he rehabilitated roads and bridges, encouraged the arts, built hospitals and a large number of schools. He cleared out slum dwellers for new development projects, some for the benefit of the Suharto family, and tried to eliminate rickshaws and banned street vendors. He began control of migration to the city to stem overcrowding and poverty. Foreign investment contributed to a real estate boom that transformed the face of the city. The boom ended with the 1997 Asian financial crisis, putting Jakarta at the center of violence, protest and political maneuvering. After 32 years in power, support for President Suharto began to wane. Tensions reached a peak when four students were shot dead at Trisakti University by security forces, four days of riots and violence ensued that killed an estimated 1,200, and destroyed or damaged 6,000 buildings, forcing Suharto to resign. Much of the rioting targeted Chinese Indonesians. Jakarta has remained the focal point of democratic change in Indonesia. Jama Islamiya connected bombings occurred almost annually in the city between 2000 and 2005, with another bombing in 2009. In August 2007, Jakarta held its first ever election to choose a governor as part of a nationwide decentralization program that allows direct local elections in several areas. Previously, governors were elected by the members of Jakarta Council (DPRD). Topic: Administration. Topic. Government and politics Jakarta is administratively equal to a province with special status. The executive branch is headed by an elected governor and a deputy governor, while DPRD is the legislative branch with 106 directly elected members. Executive governance consists of five administrative cities, Kota Administratif, each headed by a mayor, and one administrative regency, Kabupaten Administratif headed by a regent, Bupati. Unlike other cities and regencies in Indonesia where the mayor or regent are directly elected, Jakarta's mayors and regent are chosen by the governor of Jakarta. Each city and regency is divided into administrative districts. Aside from representatives to the Regional Representative Council, Jakarta sent 21 members to the People's Representative Council. The representatives are elected from Jakarta's three national electoral districts, which also includes overseas voters. Polda Metro Jaya maintains the law, security, and order of Jakarta. It is led by a regional chief of police, Kapolda, who holds the rank of Inspector General of Police. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Municipal finances. The Jakarta provincial government relies on transfers from the central government for the bulk of its income. Local non-central government sources of revenue are incomes from various taxes such as vehicle ownership and vehicle transfer fees among others. The ability of the regional government to respond to Jakarta's many problems is constrained by limited finances. In 2013, the budget was around RP50 trillion, about 5.2 billion dollars, equivalent to around $380 per citizen. 
Spending priorities were education, transport, flood control, environment and social spending such as health and housing. The provincial government consistently runs a surplus of between 15 to 20% of planned spending, largely because of delays in procurement and other inefficiencies. Regular underspending is a matter of public comment. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Administrative divisions. Jakarta consists of five kota administrative administrative cities, municipalities, each headed by a mayor, and a kabupaten administrative administrative regency. Each city and regency is divided into districts kekamatan. The administrative cities, municipalities of Jakarta are. Central Jakarta Jakarta Pusat is Jakarta's smallest city and the administrative and political center. It is divided into eight districts. It is characterized by large parks and Dutch colonial buildings. Landmarks include the National Monument Monas, Istiklal Mosque, Jakarta Cathedral and museums. West Jakarta, Jakarta Barat has the city's highest concentration of small-scale industries. This city has eight districts. The area includes Jakarta's Chinatown and Dutch colonial landmarks such as the Chinese Langham Building and Toko Mera. It contains part of Jakarta Old Town. South Jakarta Jakarta Selatan, originally planned as a satellite city, is now the location of upscale shopping centers and affluent residential areas. It has 10 districts and functions as Jakarta's groundwater buffer, but recently the Green Belt areas are threatened by new developments. Much of the central business district is concentrated in Setiabudi, South Jakarta, bordering the Tana Abang, Sudirman area of central Jakarta. East Jakarta, Jakarta Timur territory is characterized by several industrial sectors. Also located in East Jakarta are Taman Mini Indonesia Inda and Halim Perdanakusuma International Airport. This city has 10 districts. North Jakarta, Jakarta Utara is bounded by the Java Sea. It is the location of Port of Tanjung Priyo. Large and medium-scale industries are concentrated there. It contains part of Jakarta Old Town and was the center of VOC trade activity during the colonial era. Also located in North Jakarta is Ankal Dreamland Taman Impian Jaya Ankal, the largest integrated tourism area in Southeast Asia. North Jakarta is divided into six districts. The only administrative regency Kabupaten of Jakarta is Thousand Islands, Kapalawan Seribu, formerly a district within North Jakarta. It is a collection of 105 small islands located on the Java Sea. It has of high conservation value because of its special ecosystems. Marine tourism, such as diving, water bicycling, and wind surfing, are the primary tourist activities in this territory. The main mode of transportation between the islands are speed boats or small ferries. Geography Jakarta covers 699.5 square kilometers, 270.1 square miles, square kilometers, 33rd among Indonesian provinces. Greater Jakarta metropolitan area has an area of 6,392 square kilometers, which extends into two of the bordering provinces of West Java and Banten. The Greater Jakarta area includes three bordering regencies Bekasi Regency, Tangerang Regency and Bogor Regency and five adjacent cities Bogor, Depak, Bekasi, Tangerang and South Tangerang. Topography Jakarta is situated on the northwest coast of Java, at the mouth of the Siliwang River on Jakarta Bay, an inlet of the Java Sea. The northern part of Jakarta is plain land, some areas of which are below sea level and subject to frequent flooding. The southern parts of the city are hilly. It is one of only two Asian capital cities located in the southern hemisphere along with East Timaz Dili. Officially, the area of the Jakarta Special District is 662 square kilometers, 256 square miles of land area and 6977 square kilometers, 2694 square miles of sea area. The Thousand Islands, which are administratively a part of Jakarta, are located in Jakarta Bay, north of the city. Jakarta lies in a low and flat alluvial plain, ranging from minus 2 to 50 meters, minus 7 to 164 feet, with an average elevation of 8 meters, 26 feet above sea level with historically extensive swampy areas. 13 rivers flow through Jakarta. 
They are, Siliwang River, Kalabaru, Paysongran, Sipanang, Anki River, Maha, Mukervert, Krukat, Baran, West Tarum, Kaking, Patukongan, Sunter River and Grogal River. These rivers flow from the Punchak Highlands to the south of the city, then across the city northwards towards the Java Sea. The Siliwang River divides the city into the western and eastern districts. These rivers, combined with the wet season rains and insufficient drainage due to clogging, make Jakarta prone to flooding. Moreover, Jakarta is sinking about 5 to 10 cm each year, and up to 20 cm in the northern coastal areas. To help cope with the threat from the sea, the Netherlands will give $4 million for a feasibility study to build a dike around Jakarta Bay. The ring dike would be equipped with a pumping system and retention areas to defend against seawater and function as a toll road. The project was to be completed by 2025. In January 2014, central government agreed to build two dams in CIAWI, Bogor and a 1.2 km .75 mile tunnel from Siliwang River to Sisidane River to ease Jakarta floods. Construction costs will be paid for by the central government, but land acquisitions are the responsibility of the Jakarta Authority. Nowadays, an 1.2 km 0. 75 mile, with capacity 60 cubic meters 2,100 cubic feet per second, underground water tunnel between Siliwang River and the East Flood Canal is being worked on to ease the Siliwang River overflows. Topic. Climate Jakarta has a tropical monsoon climate according to the Köppen climate classification system. The wet season in Jakarta covers the majority of the year, running from October through May. The remaining four months June through September constitute the city's drier season each of these four months has an average monthly rainfall of less than 100 mm Located in the western part of Java, Jakarta's wet season rainfall peak is January and February with average monthly rainfall of 299.7 mm in, and its dry season low point is August with a monthly average of 43.2 mm in. Parks and lakes In June 2011 Jakarta had only 10.5% green open spaces although this grew to 13.94%. Public parks are included in public green open spaces. As of 2014, 183 water reservoirs and lakes supported the Greater Jakarta area. Merdeka Square is an almost one square kilometer field housing the symbol of Jakarta, Monas or Monument Nacional National Monument. Until 2000 it was the world's largest city square. The square was created by Dutch Governor-General Herman Willem Dandels 1810 and was originally named Koningsplein King's Square. On 10 January 1993, President Soharto started the beautification of the square. Features including a deer park and 33 trees that represent the 33 provinces of Indonesia were added. Lepangan Banteng Buffalo Field is located in central Jakarta near Istiklal Mosque, Jakarta Cathedral, and Jakarta Central Post Office. It covers about 4.5 hectares. Initially it was called Waterloopaline and functioned as the ceremonial square during the colonial period. Colonial monuments and memorials erected on the square during the colonial period were demolished during the Sukarno era. The most notable monument in the square is the Monument Pembebasan Irian Bharat Monument of the Liberation of West Irian. During the 1970s and 1980s the park was used as a bus terminal. In 1993 the park was turned into a public space again. It became a recreation place for people and serves as an exhibition place or for other events. Jakarta Flona Flora Dan Fauna, a flower and decoration plants and pet exhibition, is held in this park around August annually. Taman Mini Indonesia Inda Miniature Park of Indonesia, in East Jakarta, has 10 mini parks. Seropathy Park is located in Menteng, central Jakarta. The park is surrounded by Dutch colonial buildings. Taman Seropathy was known as Burgemeester Bishaplane during the colonial time. The park is circular shaped with a surface area of 16,322 square meters 175,690 square feet. Several modern statues were made for the park by artists of ASEAN countries, which contributes to its nickname Taman Persahabatan Seniman ASEAN Park of the ASEAN Artists' Friendship. 
Menteng Park and the Situ Lembong Pond. Menteng Park was built on the site of the former Persija Football Stadium. Kalihodo Park is the newest park, in Penjuringan subdistrict, with 3.4 hectares 8.4 acres beside the Krengdang River. It formally opened on of February 2017. The park is open 24 hours as a green open space and child-friendly integrated public space and has international standard skateboard facilities. Muara Anki Wildlife Sanctuary and Anki Kapak Nature Tourism Park at Penjuringan in North Jakarta. Ragunan Zoo is located in Pasar Minggu, South Jakarta. It is the world's third oldest zoo and is the second largest with the most diverse animal and plant populations. Setu Babakan is a 32 hectare lake surrounded by Batawi Cultural Village, located at Jagakarsa, South Jakarta. Ankal Dreamland is the largest integrated tourism area in Southeast Asia. It is located along the bay, at Ankal in North Jakarta. Taman Waduk Pluit, Pluit Lake Park at Pluit, North Jakarta Honda Park at Tibet, South Jakarta Taman Langsat and Taman Ayodhya in South Jakarta Demography Population Jakarta attracts people from across Indonesia, often in search of employment. The 1961 census showed that 51% of the city's population was born in Jakarta. Inwards immigration tended to negate the effect of family planning programs. Between 1961 and 1980, the population of Jakarta doubled, and during the period 1980 to 1990, the city's population grew annually by 3.7%. The 2010 census counted some 9.58 million people, well above government estimates. The population rose from 4.5 million in 1970 to 9.5 million in 2010, counting only legal residents, while the population of Greater Jakarta rose from 8.2 million in 1970 to 28.5 million in 2010. According to the government's Jakarta in Figures document, the population stood at 10,187,595 in 2011 and 9,761,407 in 2012. As per 2014, the population of Jakarta stood at 10,075,310 people, with a population density of 15,174 people per square kilometer. As per 2014, the population of Greater Jakarta was 30,326,103, accounting for 11% of Indonesia's overall population. The gender ratio was 102.8 males per 100 females in 2010 and 101.3 in 2014. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ethnicity and language. Jakarta is a pluralistic and religiously diverse city. As of 2000, 35.16% of the city's population are Javanese, 27.65% Batawi, 15.27% Sundanese, 5.53% Chinese, 3.61% Batak, 3.18% Manangkabau and 1.62% Malays. And as of 2010 census, 36.17% of the city's population are Javanese, 28.29% Batawi, 14.61% Sundanese, 6.62% Chinese, 3.42% Batak, 2.85% Manangkabau, 0.96% Malays, Indo and others 7.08%. The Batawi, Orang Batawi, or people of Batavia are the descendants of the people living in and around Batavia, and became recognized as an ethnic group around the 18th-19th century. The Batawi people are mostly descended from Southeast Asian ethnic groups brought or attracted to Batavia to meet labor needs. Batawi people are a Creole ethnic group who came from various parts of Indonesia and intermarried with Chinese, Arabs and Europeans. Batawi form a minority in the city, most live in the fringe areas of Jakarta with hardly any Batawi dominated areas in central Jakarta. A significant Chinese community has lived in Jakarta for many centuries. Chinese in Jakarta traditionally reside around old urban areas, such as Penangsha, Pluit, and Glodok Jakarta Chinatown areas. They also can be found in the old Chinatowns of Senan and Jatinagara. Officially, they make up 5.53% of the Jakarta population, although this number may be under-reported. The Sumatran residents are diverse. 
According to 2010 census, roughly 346,000 Batak, 305,000 Manangkabau and 155,000 Malays lived there. The Batak and Manangkabau are spread throughout the city. The Batak ethnic group has increased in ranking, from 8th in 1930 to 5th in 2000. Toba Batak is the largest sub-ethnic Batak group in Jakarta. Manangkabau people work as merchants, peddlers, and artisans, with more in white collar professions, doctors, teachers, and journalists. Indonesian is the official and dominant language of Jakarta. English is the second language, while many elderly people speak Dutch and Portuguese. Each of the ethnic groups use their mother language at home, such as Batawi language, Javanese, Sundanese, Malay, Madaris, Batak, Manangkabau, Chinese, Arabic, and Tamil. Batawi language is distinct from those of the Sundanese or Javanese, forming itself as a language island in the surrounding area. The language is mostly based on the East Malay dialect and enriched by loan words from Dutch, Portuguese, Sundanese, Javanese, Manangkabau, Chinese, and Arabic. Topic religion In 2017, Jakarta's religious composition is distributed over Islam 83.43%, Protestantism 8.63%, Catholicism 4.0%, Buddhism 3.74%, Hinduism 0.19%, and Confucianism 0.01%. Folk religion is claimed for 231 people. Most Pasantran Islamic boarding schools in Jakarta are affiliated with the traditionalist Nadlatul Ulama, modernist organizations mostly catering to a socio-economic class of educated urban elites and merchant traders. They give priority to education, social welfare programs and religious propagation. Many Islamic organizations have headquarters in Jakarta, including Nadlatul Ulama, Indonesian Alema Council, Muhammadiyah, Jeringan Islam Liberal, and Front Pembela Islam. Roman Catholics have a metropolitan see, the Archdiocese of Jakarta, which includes West Java as part of the ecclesiastical province. A Baha'i community is there. Topic culture Rather than a single, dominant culture, Jakarta's many languages and ethnic groups, support differences in regard to religion, traditions and linguistics. Topic arts and festivals The Batawi culture is distinct from those of the Sundanese or Javanese, forming a language island in the surrounding area. Batawi arts have a low profile in Jakarta, and most Batawi have moved to the suburbs, displaced by new migrants. It is easier to find Java or Minang-based wedding ceremonies rather than Batawi weddings in Jakarta. It is easier to find Javanese gamelan instead of Tanjador, a mixture between Batawi and Portuguese music, Marawis, a mixture between Batawi and Yemeni music, or Gambing Kraming, a mixture between Batawi and Chinese music. The Chinese-influenced Batawi culture, reflected in the popularity of Chinese cakes and sweets, firecrackers and Batawi wedding attire that demonstrates Chinese and Arab influences. Some festivals such as the Jalan Jaksa Festival or Kamang Festival include efforts to preserve Batawi arts by inviting artists to give performances. Jakarta has several performing arts centers, such as the classical concert hall Aula Symphonia Jakarta in Kemayoran, Taman Ismail Marzuki, Tim Art Center in Sakini, Gadum Kesinian Jakarta near Pasar Baru, Balai Sarbini in the Plaza Samangji area, Bentara Budaya Jakarta in Palmera area, Pasar Seni Art Market in Ankal, and traditional Indonesian art performances at the pavilions of some provinces in Taman Mini Indonesia Inda. Traditional music is often found at high-class hotels, including Wayang and Gamelan performances. Javanese Wayang Orang performances can be found at Wayang Orang Bharata Theater. Arts and culture festivals, and exhibitions include the annual Jakarta International Film Festival Jifist, Jakarta International Java Jazz Festival, Jakarta Warehouse Project, Jakarta Fashion Week, Jakarta Fashion and Food Festival JFFF, Jakarta Fair, Indonesia Creative Products and Jakarta Arts and Crafts Exhibition. Flona Jakarta is a flora and fauna exhibition, held annually in August at Lepangan Banteng Park, featuring flowers, plant nurseries, and pets. Jakarta Fair is held annually from mid-June to mid-July to celebrate the anniversary of the city and is largely centered around a trade fair. However, this month-long fair also features entertainment, including arts and music performances by local musicians. Jakarta International Java Jazz Festival JJF is one of the largest jazz festivals in the world and arguably the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere, which is held annually in March. Several foreign art and culture centers are established in Jakarta, and mainly serve to promote culture and language through learning centers, libraries and art galleries. 
Among these foreign art and cultural centres are China Confucius Institute, Netherlands Erasmus Huis, UK British Council, France Alliance Francaise, Germany Goethe Institute, Japan Foundation, and India Jawaharlal Nehru Indian Cultural Centre. Topic cuisine All varieties of Indonesian cuisine have a presence in Jakarta. The local cuisine is Batawi cuisine, which reflects various foreign culinary traditions. Batawi cuisine is heavily influenced by Malay Chinese Peranakan cuisine, Sundanese and Javanese cuisine, which is also influenced by Indian, Arabic and European cuisines. One of the most popular local dishes of Betwai cuisine is Soto Batawi which is prepared from chunks of beef and offal in rich and spicy cow's milk or coconut milk broth. Other popular Batawi dishes include Soto Kaki, Nasi Uduk, Kurik Teller spicy omelet, Nasi Ulam, Asinan, Kitaprak, Rujak and Gado Gado Batawi salad in peanut sauce. Jakarta cuisine can be found in modest street side warung food stalls and kaki lima five legs, traveling vendors to high-end fine dining restaurants. Live music venues and exclusive restaurants are abundant. Many traditional foods from far-flung regions in Indonesia can be found in Jakarta. For example, traditional padang restaurants and low-budget warteg food stalls are ubiquitous in the capital. Other popular street foods include nasi goreng, fried rice, sat, skewered meats, pasel lele, fried catfish, bakso, meatballs, bakpao, Chinese bun, and somai, fish dumplings. Jalan Sabang, Jalan Sidorio, Jalan Kendal at Menteng area, Kota Tua, Block S, Block M, Jalan Tibet are all popular destinations for street food lovers. Menteng, Kamang, Jalan Senapati, Kuningan, Sanayan and Pantai Inda Kapak, Kelapa Gading areas have trendy restaurants, cafe and bars. Chinese street food is plentiful at Jalan Panjaran, Manga Besar and Pedak Sembilan in the old Jakarta area, while Little Tokyo area of Block M has many Japanese-style restaurants and bars. Langang Jakarta is a food court, accommodating small traders and street vendors, where Indonesian foods are available within a single compound. At present there are two such food courts, located at Mona's and Kemayoran, global fast food chain like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, A&W, Fatburger, Johnny Rockets, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts are present, along with local brands like Joe, S. Teller 77, Kebab Turkey, and CFC or Japanese Hakben. Foreign cuisines such as Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, Indian, American, French, Mediterranean cuisines like Turkish, Italian, Middle Eastern cuisine, and modern fusion food can all be found in Jakarta. Topic museums Jakarta hosts 142 museums, clustered around the central Jakarta's Merdeka Square area, Jakarta Old Town and Taman Mini Indonesia Inda. Old Town contains museums in former institutional buildings of colonial Batavia, including Jakarta History Museum, former City Hall of Batavia, Wayang Museum, Puppet Museum, former Church of Batavia, the Fine Art and Ceramic Museum, former Courthouse of Justice of Batavia, the Maritime Museum, former Sunda Kelapa Warehouse, Bank Indonesia Museum, former Javish Bank, and Bank Mandiri Museum, former Nederlandsche Handels Machapij. Museums clustered in central Jakarta around the Merdeka Square area include, National Museum of Indonesia which also known as Gadum Gajah the Elephant Building, National Gallery of Indonesia, National History Museum at National Monument, Istiklal Islamic Museum in Istiklal Mosque and Jakarta Cathedral Museum on the second floor of Jakarta Cathedral. Also in central is the Taman Prasasti Museum former Cemetery of Batavia, and Textile Museum in Tana Abang area. Museum Makan is an art museum of modern and contemporary Indonesian and international art located at West Jakarta. The recreational area of Taman Mini Indonesia Inda in East Jakarta contains 14 museums, such as Indonesia Museum, Purna Bhakti Pertiwi Museum, Azmat Museum, Beit Al Quran Islamic Museum, Pusaka Heirloom Museum, and other science based museums such as Research and Technology Information Center, Komodo Indonesian Fauna Museum, Insect Museum, Petrol and Gas Museum, plus the Transportation Museum. Other museums are Satria Mandala Military Museum, Museum Sumpah Pemuda, and Lubang Buaya Crocodile well. Topic Media Jakarta has numerous newspapers, television and radio stations. Daily newspapers include Kompas, Quran Tempo, Media Indonesia, Republika, Suara Pemberuan, Saputar Indonesia, Suara Karya, Sinar Harapan, Indo Pos, Journal Nasional, and Harian Palita. English language newspapers are also published daily, for example the Jakarta Post and the Jakarta Globe. 
Chinese language newspapers are Indonesia Shang Bao, Yin Ni Shang Bao Harian Indonesia, Yin Ni Shing Jo Ri Bao and Guo Ji Ri Bao. Guo Ji Ri Bao. The only Japanese language newspaper is the daily Jakarta Shimbun. Jakarta Shinwen. Jakarta has also the daily newspapers segment such as Pos Kota, Warta Kota, Karan Jakarta, Barita Kota for local readers, Business Indonesia, Investor Daily, Kantan, Harian Naracha Business News, as well as Top Score and Soccer Sport News. Jakarta is the headquarters for Indonesia's state media, TVRI as well as private national television networks, Metro TV, TV1, Compass TV, Trans TV, Trans7, RCTI, MNC, SCTV, GTV, IndoCR, ANTV, RTV and NET. Jakarta has local television channels such as Jack TV, O Channel, El Shinta TV, and DAAI TV Indonesia. The city is home to the country's main pay television service. Cable channels available includes First Media and Telecomvision. Satellite Television DTH has yet to gain mass acceptance in Jakarta. Prominent DTH entertainment services are Indovision, Oakvision, Yes TV, Transvision, and AORA TV. Many TV stations are analog PAL, but some are now converting to digital signals using DVB-T2 following a government plan to digital television migration. 75 radio stations broadcast in Jakarta, 52 on the FM band, and 23 on the AM band. Topic economy Indonesia is the largest economy of ASEAN and Jakarta is the economic nerve center of the Indonesian archipelago. The city generated about one-sixth of Indonesian GDP in 2008. Jakarta's nominal GDP was $483.8 billion in 2016, which is about 17.5% of Indonesia's. Jakarta's economy depends highly on manufacturing and service sectors such as banking, trading, and financial. Industries include electronics, automotive, chemicals, mechanical engineering, and biomedical sciences. The head office of Bank Indonesia and Indonesia Stock Exchange located in the city. Most of the SOE including Pertamina, PLN, PGN, Ankasa Pura, BULOG, Telkomsel, Waskita operate head offices in the city. Major Indonesian conglomerates maintain head offices there such as, Salim Group, Sinar Moss Group, Astra International, Lippo Group, Bakrai Group, Siputra Group, Agong Padomoro Group, Unilever Indonesia, Jarum, Gudang Garam, Compass Gramedia, Lion Air, Sriwijaya Air, Medco Energy, MNC, Transcorp, Kalbi Pharma. As of 2018, Jakarta contributes about 17% of Indonesia's GRDP gross regional domestic product. Economic growth was 6.22% and 5.02% in 2017 and 2016 respectively. Throughout 2017, total value of investment was RP 108.6 trillion, about US$8 billion, an increase of 84.7% from the same period in 2016. In 2014, per capita GDP was RP 174.87 million or US$14,727. In 2015, GDP per capita was estimated RP 194.87 million or US$14,570. The largest contributions to GRDP were by finance, ownership and business services 29%, trade, hotel and restaurant sector 20%, and manufacturing industry sector 16%. In 2007, the increase in per capita GRDP of Jakarta inhabitants was 11.6% compared to the previous year both GRDP by at current market price and GRDP by at 2000 constant price in 2007 for the municipality of Central Jakarta, which was RP 146 million and RP 81 million, was higher than other municipalities in Jakarta. The Wealth Report 2015 by Knight Frank reported that 24 individuals in Indonesia in 2014 had wealth at least $1 billion and 18 live in Jakarta. The cost of living continues to rise. Both land price and rents have become expensive. Mercer's 2017 Cost of Living Survey ranked Jakarta as 88th costliest city in the world for expatriates. Industrial development and the construction of new housing thrive on the outskirts, while commerce and banking remain concentrated in the city center. Jakarta has a bustling luxury property market. 
Knight Frank, a global real estate consultancy based in London, reported in 2014 that Jakarta offered the highest return on high-end property investment in the world in 2013, citing a supply shortage and a sharply depreciated currency as reasons. Topic: Shopping. Jakarta has numerous shopping malls and markets. With a total of 550 hectares, Jakarta has the world's largest shopping mall floor area within a single city. The annual Jakarta Great Sale Festival is held every year in June and July to celebrate Jakarta's anniversary, with about 83 participating shopping malls in 2018. Malls include Plaza Indonesia, Grand Indonesia Shopping Town, Plaza Senayan, Senayan City and Pacific Place, Mall Taman Anggrek, Pondok Indah Mall, Mal Kelapa Gading, Central Park Jakarta, Lot Shopping Avenue, Gondaria City, Kota Casablanca, Kamang Village, Lipo Mall Puri and Bay Walk Mall. Department stores in Senayan City, and Lippo Mall Kamang Village use the Debenhams brand under license, while the Japanese Sogo department store has about seven stores. Saibu flagship store is located in Grand Indonesia Shopping Town, and French luxury department store, Galleries Lafayette opened its doors for the first time in Southeast Asia at Pacific Place. The Satrio Casablanca Corridor, 3.5 km street is a new shopping belt in Jakarta. Many multi-story shopping centers are located there, such as Cunningham City, Mal Ambassador, Kota Casablanca, and Lot Shopping Avenue. Traditional markets include Block M, Tana Abang, Senin, Pasar Baru, Glodok, Manga Dua, Sempaka Mas, and Jatinagara. Special markets sell antique goods at Surabaya Street and gemstones in Rawabening Market. Tourism Jakarta has been named the most popular location as per Tag Stories and ranked 8th most posted among the cities in the world in 2017 on image sharing site Instagram. The city is not a top international tourist destination, although it ranked as the 5th fastest growing destination among 132 cities according to Mastercard Global Destination Cities Index published in September, 2017. 59.1% of visitors came for business, while the other 40.9% were visiting for leisure. According to Euromonitor International's latest top 100 city destinations ranking, Jakarta ranked at 83 with more than 3.5 million international tourists visited in a year, 48.5% higher in comparison to the previous year. Most of the visitors attracted to Jakarta are domestic tourists. As the gateway of Indonesia, Jakarta often serves as a stop over for foreign visitors on their way to other Indonesian tourist destinations such as Bali, Lombok, Komodo Island and Yogyakarta. Jakarta is trying to attract more international tourists by MICE tourism, by arranging increasing numbers of conventions. In 2012, the tourism sector contributed 2.6 trillion rupiah .5 million to the city's total direct income of 17.83 trillion rupiah, $1 billion, a 17.9% increase from the previous year 2011. The popular heritage tourism attractions are in Kota and around Merdeka Square. Kota is the center of Old Jakarta, with its Maritime Museum, Kota Intan Drawbridge, Garija Sion, Wayang Museum, Stadwis Batavia, Fine Art and Ceramic Museum, Toko Mera, Bank Indonesia Museum, Bank Mandiri Museum, Jakarta Kota Station, and Glodok Chinatown. Kota Tua was named the most visited destination in Indonesia in 2017 by image sharing platform Instagram. In the old ports of Sunda Kelapa, the tall masted Pinisi ships are still anchored. The Jakarta Cathedral with Neo-Gothic architecture in central Jakarta also attracts architecture enthusiasts. Other tourist attractions include Thousand Islands, Taman Mini Indonesia Inda, Setu Babakan, Ragunan Zoo, Sunda Kelapa Old Port and the Ankal Dreamland Complex on Jakarta Bay, which houses Dunia Fantasy, Fantasy World, Theme Park, Sea World, Atlantis Water Adventure, and Jalangang Samudra. Thousand Islands, which is north to the coast of the city and in Java Sea is also a popular tourist destination. Most international hotel chains are present. Jalan Jaksa and surrounding area is popular among backpackers for cheaper accommodation, travel agencies, second-hand bookstores, money changers, laundries and pubs. Pick is a relatively new suburb for hangout, while Kamang is a favorite suburb for expats. Infrastructure. 
Water supply Two private companies, PALYJA and ATRA, provide piped water in the western and eastern half of Jakarta respectively under 25-year concession contracts signed in 1998. A public asset holding company called Pam Jaya owns the infrastructure. 80% of the water distributed in Jakarta comes through the West Tarum Canal system from Jatilahar Reservoir on the Sitaram River 70 km 43 miles southeast of the city. Water supply was privatised by President Suharto in 1998 to the French company Suez Environment and the British company Thames Water International. Both companies subsequently sold their concessions to Indonesian companies. Customer growth in the seven first years of the concessions had been lower than before, possibly because of substantial inflation-adjusted tariff increases during this period. In 2005 tariffs were frozen, leading the private water companies to cut down on investments. According to PALYJA in its western half of the concession the service coverage ratio increased substantially from 34% in 1998 to 59% in 2007 and 65% in 2010. According to data by the Jakarta Water Supply Regulatory Body, access in the eastern half of the city served by PTJ increased from about 57% in 1998 to about 67% in 2004, but stagnated after that. However, other sources cite much lower access figures for piped water supply to houses, excluding access provided through public hydrants. One study estimated access as low as 25% in 2005, while another source estimates it to be as low as 18.5% in 2011. Those without access to piped water get water mostly from wells that are often salty and unsanitary. As of 2017, according to the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, Jakarta had a crisis over clean water. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare. Indonesia's healthcare system is among the best in Southeast Asia together with neighboring countries such as Singapore, Malaysia or Thailand. The capital Jakarta does have many of the country's best equipped private and public facilities. In January 2014, the Indonesian government launched Jaminan Kesehatan Nasional JKN, Universal Health Care in Indonesia. This scheme is the world's largest insurance system today that covers around 250 million people. It is expected that the entire population will be covered in 2019. Hospitals are of a good standard, however, they are often overcrowded. Government-run specialized hospitals include Dr. Sipto Mangankusumo Hospital, Gatot Sobroto Army Hospital as well as Community Hospitals Pascesmus. Private hospitals and clinics are another option for healthcare services. Private healthcare sector has seen significant changes, as the government began allowing foreign investment in the private sector in 2010. While some private facilities are run by non-profit or religious organizations, most are for profit. Hospital chains such as Siloam, Mayapada, Mitra Kaluarga, Medica, Medistra, Hermina operate in the city. Transport Despite a variety of transport systems, Jakarta faces traffic jams during rush hours. The city prioritized development of road networks, which were designed to accommodate private vehicles. According to the National Development Planning Agency, or BAPINAS, traffic congestion in Greater Jakarta wastes about $7.4 billion each year due to congestion. As of 2018, about 3.6 million commuters commute from the outskirts. 58% of these commuters use motorcycles, 12.8% use cars and only 27% use public transportation. The city's 9.5% average annual growth rate of motorized vehicles far exceeds the 0.01% increase in road length between 2005 and 2010. As of 2010, public transportation in Jakarta serves only 56% of commuter trips. The first public transport system in the city was Jakarta Tramline, which opened in 1869 and ceased operation in 1962. Public transit consists of a BRT Transjakarta, commuter rail KRL Jabodetabek, and Sokarno Hatta Airport Rail Link. Transit systems under construction are Jakarta MRT and Jakarta LRT, which are expected to be operational by 2018. <laughs> Road 
A structured road network was developed in the early 19th century as a part of the Java Great Post Road by former Governor General Dandles. It connects most cities throughout Java. During the following decades, the expanding road network could not keep up with the increasing numbers of motorized vehicles. A toll road network composed of an inner and outer ring road and five toll roads radiating outwards provides inner as well as outer city connections. Jakarta Outer Ring Road 2 is a toll road encircling Greater Jakarta area, parallel with Jakarta Outer Ring Road. Jakarta Elevated Toll Road with a dedicated public transportation lane, connecting Jakarta Inner Ring Toll Road which is 69.77 km in length is under construction. Many attempts have been made to reduce traffic congestion, including a three-in-one rush hour law, during which cars with fewer than three passengers were prohibited, a ban on trucks passing main avenues during the day, and an odd-even policy that permitted cars with either odd or even numbered registration plates to drive on alternate days. Electronic road pricing is expected to be operational by 2019 along with the opening of the Jakarta MRT. Many bus routes connect neighborhoods within the city limit to other areas of Greater Jakarta area and to cities across the island. The biggest bus terminal is Pulo Gabong Bus Terminal, arguably the largest in Southeast Asia. Many companies operate taxis and maintain vehicle pools accessible with app based ride hailing Go JEK and Grab. In 1971 pedicabs were banned from major roads. Shortly thereafter the government attempted a total ban, which substantially reduced their numbers. From the early 1940s to 1991 Bajaj auto rickshaws were common, later allowed only in the back streets of some parts of the city. Angkot micro buses play a major role. Although Ojek motorcycle taxi are not an official form of public transport, they can be found throughout. Most Ojeks are operated under app-based ride-hailing companies like GoJEK and Grab. Transjakarta serves as the bus rapid transit service, including the world's longest bus rapid transit routes 210 km 130 miles in length. Transjakarta had a total of 128 routes as of April, 2018 corridor, cross route and feeder route a significant increase from 41 routes in 2015. Transjakarta targeted to serve 1 million passengers per day by the end of 2018. Other private-owned bus systems like Kapaha, Metromini, Mayasari Bhakta and APTB provide service. Jakarta City Government provides free double-decker city tour bus service that offers sightseeing. Tourists can catch the double-decker bus, free of charge, in several designated bus stops in front of city's points of interest. Several routes cover tourist attractions such as Monas, Istiklal Mosque, the Cathedral, National Museum, Serena, Hotel Indonesia Crossing, Kota Tua and Kalihodo Park. The service includes Kota Tua in the north, Kalihodo Park in the west and Jalora Bung Karno Stadium in Sinayan area in the south, via Sudirman Avenue. Transjakarta operates free tour buses every Saturday from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. to popular culinary destinations in central Jakarta. Transjakarta has special bus service to move shoppers from one mall to another, including Grand Indonesia, Plaza Indonesia, Plaza Senayan, Senayan City and FX Sudirman. Topic rail Long distance railways and local tram services were introduced during the colonial era. The first station was built in 1887 by a private railway company, which later became Jakarta Kota Station. The trams were replaced with buses in the post-colonial era, while long-distance railways continued to connect the city to its neighboring regions as well as cities throughout Java. The main terminus for long-distance train services are Gambir and Pasar Senan. High-speed railways are under construction connecting Jakarta to Bandung, while a line between Jakarta and Surabaya is in planning. KRL Jabodetabek is a commuter rail system, that reaches Rankasbiting in Banten and Sikarang in Bekasi Regency. The rail system uses rolling stock of rapid transit standard and operates at high frequency with a minimum headway. Daily ridership average was about 0.95 million, totaling 315.8 million passengers in 2017. Jakarta MRT is constructing a north south line between Kota and Lebak Bulus, and an east west line that will connect to the north south line at Sawa Besar Station. The first, 15. 2 km long line between Hotel Indonesia and Lebak Bulus was scheduled to be operational by 2018, and the North-South Line MRT network by 2020. 
The network when complete will stretch approximately 110.8 kilometers, 68.8 miles. Jakarta LRT was launched to replace a previously abandoned monorail project. The system is planned to connect Jakarta city center with suburbs such as Bekasi, Bogor and Depok. The first phase will connect East Bekasi and Sabubur with Duka, passing through Chawang intersection. This phase will be 42.1 km .2 miles long, with 18 stations. Another LRT line connecting Kelapa Gading District and Jakarta International Velodrome is to open in December 2018. Sokarno Hatta Airport Rail Link is a commuter train service connecting the Sokarno Hatta International Airport to the city centre. Another express train service is now in planning to connect Sokarno Hatta International Airport with Halim Perdanakusuma Airport. Completion of this line is expected to be in 2019. Topic: Air. Sokarno Hatta International Airport (CGK) is the main airport located in Tangerang, Banten. The airport was ranked 17th busiest by Airports Council International, with about 63 million passengers in 2017. The Sokarno Hatta Airport Rail Link connects the airport to Sudirman Baru Railway Station, South Jakarta. A second airport, Halim Perdanakusuma Airport (HLP), serves domestic low-cost airlines, private and VIP flights. Other airports include Pondok Cabe Airport and an airfield on Pulau Panjang, part of the Thousand Island Archipelago, Kepulauan Seribu. Topic: Water transport. Jakarta's main seaport Tanjung Priok offers ferry connections. Tanjung Priok is Indonesia's busiest port, and the 21st busiest port in the world in 2013, handling over 6.59 million TEUs. To boost port capacity, the two-phase New Tanjung Priok extension project was undertaken. When fully operational in 2023, it will triple existing capacity. Muara Anki Port is used as a public port, while Ankal Marina Port is used as a tourist port to connect Thousand Islands. On the 6th of June 2007, the city administration introduced the waterway, officially Ankutan Sungai, a river boat service along the Siliwang River. However, because of varying water levels during the dry and wet seasons plastic garbage those comes with water from upstream during raining, this service was discontinued. <inaudible> Cityscape Architecture Jakarta has architecturally significant buildings spanning distinct historical and cultural periods. Architectural styles reflect Malay, Javanese, Arabic, Chinese and Dutch influences. External influences inform the architecture of the Batawi house. The houses were built of Nanka wood and comprise three rooms. The shape of the roof is reminiscent of the traditional Javanese joglo. 600 registered cultural heritage buildings survive. Colonial buildings and structures include those that were constructed during the colonial period. The dominant colonial styles can be divided into three periods, the Dutch Golden Age 17th to late 18th century, the Transitional Style Period late 18th century 19th century, and Dutch Modernism 20th century. Colonial architecture is apparent in houses and villas, churches, civic buildings and offices, mostly concentrated in the Jakarta Old Town and Central Jakarta. Architects such as J. C. Schultz and Eduard Kuypers designed some of the significant buildings. Schultz's works include Jakarta Art Building, the Indonesia Supreme Court Building and Ministry of Finance Building, while Kuypers designed Bank Indonesia Museum and Bank Mandiri Museum. In the early 20th century, most buildings were built in Neo-Renaissance style. By the 1920s, the architectural taste had begun to shift in favor of rationalism and modernism, particularly Art Deco architecture. The elite suburb Menteng, developed during the 1910s, was the city's first attempt at creating ideal and healthy housing for the middle class. The original houses had a longitudinal organization, with overhanging eaves, large windows and open ventilation, all practical features for a tropical climate. It was developed by developer N. V. de Bauplog, established by P. A. J. Mujin. After independence, the process of nation building in Indonesia and demolishing the memory of colonialism was as important as the symbolic building of arterials, monuments, government buildings. 
The National Monument in Jakarta, designed by Sukarno, is Indonesia's beacon of nationalism. In the early 1960s, Jakarta provided highways and super-scale cultural monuments as well as Senayan Sports Stadium. The Parliament Building features a hyperbolic roof reminiscent of German rationalist and Corbusian design concepts. In 1996, Wisma 46 soars to height of 262 meters (860 feet) with 48 stories, and its nib-shaped top celebrates technology and symbolizes stereoscopy. The urban construction booms continued in the 21st century. Golden Triangle of Jakarta is one of the fastest evolving CBDs in Asia Pacific region. According to CTBUH and Emporis, 88 skyscrapers reach or exceed 150 meters (490 feet), which puts the city at the top 10 of world rankings. It has more buildings taller than 500 feet (150 meters) than any other Southeast Asia or Southern Hemisphere cities. Gama Tower with 310 meters tip height is the tallest building in Jakarta. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Landmarks. Most landmarks, monuments and statues were built during the Sukarno era, beginning in the 1960s, then completed in the Suharto era, while some originated in the colonial period. The most famous landmark, which became the symbol of the city is the 132-metre-tall obelisk of National Monument in the centre of Merdeka Square. On its southwest corner stands a Mahabharata-themed Arjuna Wajaya chariot statue and fountain. Further south through Jalan M.H. Thamrin, one of the main avenues, the Selamat Dating Monument stands on the fountain in the center of Hotel Indonesia roundabout. Other landmarks include the Istiklal Mosque, the Jakarta Cathedral and Emanuel Church. The former Batavia Stadwis, Sunda Kelapa Port in Jakarta Old Town is also the city's landmark. Gama Tower Building at Jalan H.R. Rasuna said, South Jakarta is currently the tallest building in Indonesia. Some of statues and monuments are nationalist, such as the West Irian Liberation Monument, Youth Statue and Durgantara Statue. Indonesian national heroes are commemorated in statues, such as Diponegoro and Kartini statues in Merdeka Square, Sudirman and Thamarin statues located in each respectable avenues, also Sukarno and Hatta statues in Proclamation Monument also on the entrance of Sokarno Hatta International Airport. Sports Jakarta hosted the 1962 Asian Games and the 2018 Asian Games, co-hosted by Palembang. Jakarta also hosted the Southeast Asian Games in 1979, 1987, 1997 and 2011 supporting Palembang. Jalora Bung Karno Stadium, the biggest in the city with a capacity of 77,193 seats, hosted the group stage, quarterfinal and final of 2007 AFC Asian Cup along with Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. The Sinayan Sports Complex has several sport venues, including the Bung Karno Football Stadium, Madhya Stadium, Istora Sinayan, Aquatic Arena, Baseball Field, Basketball Hall, a shooting range, several indoor and outdoor tennis courts. The Sinayan complex was built in 1960 to accommodate the Asian Games in 1962. For basketball, the Kelapa Gading Sport Mall in Kelapa Gading, North Jakarta, with a capacity of 7,000 seats, is the home arena of the Indonesian national basketball team. The Britama Arena serves as playground for Satria Muda Pertamina Jakarta, 2017 runner-up of the Indonesian Basketball League. Jakarta International Velodrome is a sporting facility located at Rawamangan, which was used as a venue for 2018 Asian Games. The velodrome has a seating capacity of 3,500 for track cycling, and up to 8,500 for shows and concerts, which can also be used for various sports activities such as volleyball, badminton and futsal. Jakarta International Equestrian Park is an equestrian sport venue located at Pilomas, which was used also as a venue for 2018 Asian Games. Jakarta Car Free Days are held weekly on Sunday on the main avenues of the city, Jalan Sudirman and Jalan Thamrin, from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. The briefer Car Free Day, which lasts from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., is held on every other Sunday. The event invites local pedestrians to do sports and exercise and have their activities on the streets that are normally full of cars and traffic. Along the road from the Sinayan traffic circle on Jalan Sudirman, South Jakarta, to the Selamat Dating 
Monument at the Hotel Indonesia Traffic Circle on Jalan Thamrin, north to the National Monument in central Jakarta, cars are cleared out for pedestrians. Morning gymnastics, calisthenics and aerobic exercises, futsal games, jogging, bicycling, skateboarding, badminton, karate, on street library and musical performances take over the roads and the main parks. Jakarta's most popular home football club is Persija, which plays in Indonesia Super League and uses Bung Karno Stadium as home venue. Another football team in Jakarta is Persitara who compete in 2nd Division Football League and play in Kamal Muara Stadium and Somantri Brajonegoro Stadium. Jakarta Marathon is said to be the biggest running event of Indonesia. It is recognized by Ames and IAAF. It was established in 2013 to promote Jakarta sports tourism. In the 2015 edition, more than 15,000 runners from 53 countries participated. Education Jakarta is home to colleges and universities. University of Indonesia is the largest and oldest tertiary level educational institution in Indonesia. It is a public institution with campuses in Salemba Central Jakarta and in Depok. The three other public universities in Jakarta are, Syarif Hidayatullah State Islamic University Jakarta, the State University of Jakarta and the University of Pembangunan Nasional Veteran Jakarta, UPN Veteran Jakarta. Some major private universities in Jakarta are, Trisakti University, the Christian University of Indonesia, Merku Wana University, Tarumanagara University, Atma Jaya Catholic University of Indonesia, Palita Harapan University, Bina Nusantara University, Jayabaya University, and Pankasila University. Stovia School taught Opaliting Van Indish Artsen was the first high school in Jakarta, established in 1851. Jakarta houses many students from around Indonesia, many of whom reside in dormitories or homestay residences. For basic education, a variety of primary and secondary schools are available, tagged with public national, private national and bilingual national plus and international labels. Four of the major international schools are the Gandhi Memorial International School, IPEKA International Christian School, Jakarta Intercultural School and the British School Jakarta. Other international schools include the Jakarta International Korean School, Bina Bangsa School, Jakarta International Multicultural School, Australian International School, New Zealand International School, Singapore International School and Sekolah Palita Harapan. <laughs> international relations Jakarta host foreign embassies Jakarta serves as the seat of Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN Secretariat and as ASEAN's diplomatic capital. Jakarta is a member of the Asian Network of Major Cities 21, C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group and ASEAN Smart Cities Network. Topic: <laughs> Sister Cities. Jakarta signed sister city agreements with other cities including Casablanca. To promote friendship between two cities, a main avenue famous for its shopping and business centers was named after Jakarta's Moroccan sister city. No street in Casablanca is named after Jakarta, however Rabat, Morocco's capital city, has an avenue named after Sukarno, Indonesia's first president. To commemorate his visit in 1960 and as a token of friendship, Jakarta has established a partnership with Rotterdam, especially on integrated urban water management, including capacity building and knowledge exchange. This cooperation is mainly because Jakarta and Rotterdam are dealing with similar problems, both cities lie in low-lying flat plains prone to flooding. Additionally, below sea level areas, make a drainage system involving canals, dams, and pumps vital for both cities. See also Jakarta portal Outline of Jakarta Jabodetabek Provinces of Indonesia Monas Port of Tanjung Priyo Batawi people Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. External links Official website 
Jakarta official travel website Jakarta at Curlie Geographic data related to Jakarta at OpenStreetMap <laughs>